This portion of the 9 to 5 All Our Reviews is brought to you by the Grateful Homeless Outcasts and Unwanted Layaway Society. We believe in helping ourselves. You can reach us at www.ghouls.com or simply www.ghouls.com. We are what our initials stand for. <laughs> Tales from the Crypt. Witch's cauldron! <laughs> and now that your appetites for horror have been sufficiently piqued by my fellow slime slingers CK and VK, it's time for me to feed you foul fail. So hop into the haunted fear fiends, and your hostess and he's, the old witch will dish out the delirious, the delicious delving into delirious cold morning mess. The cemetery lay silent beneath a cold moon that skipped in and out from behind dark clouds that raced along a brisk November wind. Below, the muffled sounds of digging echoed into the night. A man stood knee-deep in an excavation among the flat, plainly marked graves, anxiously seeking his spade into the soft earth and tossing it onto a growing pile beside him. Every so often, the man would stop his work, listen, and then, hearing nothing, continue digging. I thought there was something screwy about this whole setup. Right from the beginning, I felt it. Now I'm going to find out, for sure. The man furiously spaded the black loom out of the ever-deepening hole, all the while mumbling to himself, The Grateful Hobo Society, hm? He smelled funny from the start. An experienced reporter learns to sense these things. And I sensed it the, that first day at the press conference in the mayor's office. I remember how pompous old Mayor Merck stood before us and wheezed out his announcement. Gentlemen, our fair city has long had the problem of disposing of its derelicts and homeless ones who pass away with no friends or relatives to properly bury them. Heretofore, these wretched unfortunates have been laid to rest by our city in Potter's Fields, maintained by your taxes. Now, this sad responsibility has been taken out of your city's hands. Gentlemen, may I present Felix J. Kopar, representative of the Grateful Hobo Society, who will tell you of the wonderful offer his organization has made. The offer I have graciously accepted, Mr. Copard. I remember shifty-eyed Mr. Copard, smiling, soft-spoken. Gentlemen, the Grateful Hobos, Outcasts, and Unwanted Layaway Society, the Grateful Hobo Society for short, was formed by a group of successful business and professional men who felt that they owed a debt of gratitude to this fair city. All of the members of this organization came to this city as down and outers, drifters, derelicts, or just plain bums. But here, they found opportunity. Here, they found financial success. And so, in gratitude, they have banded together to aid and endow other drifters and unwanted. They have purchased a small parcel of land in one of our city's suburbs, landscaped it, and turned it into a cemetery. A beautiful cemetery. <laughs> where the poor outcasts who have not been as fortunate as they may be laid to final rest in dignity when they pass from our mortal world. The grateful hobos who prefer to remain anonymous have created an endowment fund through mutual contributions with which all funeral and cemetery updates 
upkeep expenses will be met. No longer will your taxes be needed for this purpose. No longer will Shoddy Potter's fields mark the beauty of our fair city surrounding countryside. No longer will. Yes, it smelled funny all right. I remember listening to Mr. Copehard Raybon expounding upon the wonderful group of philanthropists he represented and I remember finally asking my question Mr. Kopar is why should a group of rich men suddenly become concerned about some derelict funerals? I explain sir all of these men yes yes they were all once bums themselves you explain that but why wait until these derelicts die before helping them? Couldn't the money be put to better use by rehabilitating them while they are alive? The grateful hobos are all self-made men, sir. They received no help when they were down. The present conditions of the derelict in our city does not concern these men. Let the derelict rise up as they have done. But when the derelict can no longer rise up, when he has passed on, then let him be raised in final rest. I still don't get it. I remember attending that first funeral and seeing the grateful hobo society cemetery for the first time. Ashes to ashes, dust to dust. Nice place, Sweeney. Yeah, beautiful. It almost pays to die penniless. And I remember in the years that followed, returning from time to time and seeing the rolling wands with the simple grave markers. How come no grave mounts? Oh, they work here, mister. The society says this is the modern way a cemetery should look, so I do like they say. But after a while, the work of the Grateful Hobo Society became stale news and I turned to other things. Then, this morning, my editor called me in. Sweeney, you covered the opening of the Grateful Hobo Society cemetery for outcasts on Wednesday, didn't you? Yeah, Chief. What's up? Well, according to the Obed Department, they're burying the thousand girl left today. Take a run out and cover it for us, huh? It ought to be worth a paragraph or two. Sure, Chief. Hey, did you say the thousand derelict? Yeah, why? Well, that's impossible. It couldn't be. Why couldn't it? <laughs> it's been almost seven years. This is a big city and we've got a lot of bums. You don't understand, Chief. I'll see you later. So I drove out here this morning. Something I can do for you? I'm Swinney from the Globe. Come out to cover the funeral today. Oh, I see. Well, the very diggers are over there now preparing the grave. I'll just mosey over and watch if you don't mind. I watched him dig the six foot hole. Okay, that's it. Just in time to hit it gum. I watched the whole cemetery ceremony. A few derelict friends of the departed. One had come along to pay the last respects to their fellow. Lower the coffin. Uh, he was a swell fella. <laughs> <laughs> After the ceremony, the grave diggers returned and shoveled the dirt back into the hall and mounted it up neatly. There, that'll do. Come on! Hmm. After the grave diggers left, I stood a while, looking out over the rolling lawns with the simple markers and the new fresh grave mound jutting out like a sore thumb. That's strange. Very strange. I started pacing. I paced along the gate on the west side of the cemetery. Then I paced along the gate of the north side. I'm right. I know I'm right. I went back to the car and I started scratching away on my memo pad, figuring just what I thought. There isn't enough area in that cemetery for a thousand graves. There was something fishy about the setup. I knew it. I took a last look at the single mound amid the greenery. They must be stacking them one above the other, unless... And I drove to the nearest shopping section. I stopped at a hardware store. I'd like to buy a spade. I drove back to the cemetery and hid my car. I scaled the fence, picked the hiding place, and waited, watching it grow dark. I'll find out. I'll find out what this is all about. About. And then something happened. Something weird and frightening. The mound, the single grave mound, sunk down into the earth. Sunk down until it was level with the surrounding grass. Good lord! The cemetery lay silent beneath a cold moon. The muffled sound of digging echoed into the night. The man mumbled to himself as he dug furiously. So I'll find out. I'll find out for sure what this is all about. I'll find out. Why should a grave mound just sink down? Just vanish? Why? The striking sound of metal reverberated in the deep hole the man had dug. He looked around, confused. Metal? That's funny. The coffin was wood, and hey, I'm a good six feet down. I should have hit the coffin long ago. This isn't the coffin. The man cleared the soil away from the metal floor of the grave. The coffin is gone. 
This, this, this is a door. A door that opens downward. The man stood up in the grave. He stared at the old house nearby beyond the cemetery gates. There were lights on inside it, shining through shaded windows. Now I get it. Now I get it. The grateful hobos. Suddenly, ah! the metal floor beneath the man's feet collapsed and he plummeted down. Good evening, Mr. Swinney. <laughs> I thought I heard you knocking. Come hard. It is too bad that you've discovered our little secret, Mr. Sweeney. This is how you could bury a thousand bodies in a cemetery that couldn't hold six hundred. Exactly, Mr. Sweeney. Now, if you will leave the way, mining this gun I have pointed at you, <laughs> I will show you our intricate underground network. Why all this? As a matter of fact, Mr. Sweeney, we got the idea from a comic magazine. And yeah, notice that there is a steel trap door beneath each grave location. All oh, this eliminates digging, you see. That's why the mounds suck down. Uh, you say you got the idea from a comic magazine? Yes, a horror magazine. Tales from the Crypt, I believe. In it was a story called Midnight Mess. Up those stairs, please. Midnight Mess? Well, what was it about? It was about an organization of vampires who established the restaurant where they could get the blood they needed. Through that door, please. The Grateful Hobo's Vampires? Oh no, Mr. Sweeney. <laughs> we merely applied the story to our own needs. All we did was buy this house and in there, please. Oh, the Lord! There were 20 or 30 of them sitting about the huge banquet table, patting their mouths with their napkins. Meet the grateful hobos, outcasts, and unwanted layaway society, Mr. Sweeney. We are what our initials stand for. <laughs> G-H-O-U-L-S. That's right, Mr. Swingy. We're ghouls! Wild, wild wings! This boom bing! Stick them in the ash can! His bones are big clean! <laughs> That's the organization's chair creeps! No choking! And now it's time for me to put out the fire under my cruddy cauldron and close the door to my rigging restaurant for tasty terror tidbits. Well, I'll see you in the next Vault of Horror. Till then, get your dime's worth. Read this whole rag ever again. I dare you. And be sure to subscribe to the 9 to 5 Outlaw Reviews YouTube channel for more Comics Come Alive EC Comics Edition. For more horror tales with the Crypt Keeper, the Vault Keeper, and yours truly, the Old Witch. Keep it here, or else. <laughs>